Hey folks, we are going to continue working on the uh, Ravnica Rubble Belt uh, West March Platoon campaign that we're developing to playtest the uh, Martial Power system. So give me a second here to go through my intro and uh, then we'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to check, make sure my channel's live, if it's up and running. Uh, then uh, we'll go through my intro real quick and then we'll get to work here for a little bit. So checking my volume. Bit. So sounds good. Awesome. Cool. Uh, let me go ahead and start posting across the... Uh, the net here real quick that we are active. So give me a second here to put that into place and then up, 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 up. And there. Cool. So uh, I hang out at the uh, subreddit Ravnica DMs on Reddit. Uh, if you're familiar with that channel, you can check me out there. Um, I'm going to just do my intro spiel here real quick and crack through just putting my updates on here and then we'll get to work. So hey, my name is Phil Kearney. Uh, I create role-playing games, I illustrate them, and I publish them online, and I've been focusing my attention on Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition here for the past five years. Um, I've got a slew of links in the description down below, and uh, probably most relevant to this current project that I'm working on is the uh, Color Mana Spellpoint Variant Rules bundle that I have on dmsguild.com. Uh, you can click into and check out that link down below if you're interested. Um, it is a way of converting all of the color, uh, all of the, uh, the, the schools of magic and spell slots or DMG um, spell point system into an alternate spell point system for use with color mana um, that is specifically flavored for uh, Magic the Gathering conversion campaigns. But the magic paradigm system that it uses, the base template of universal spell points, can also be translated into an elemental paradigm of like a lot of like Avatar the Last Airbender stuff, uh, air, earth, fire, water. Um, we've gone um, through a number of uh, conversations about that earlier in the stream, uh, talking about those mechanics in, in our playlist. So um, if you are new to the stream, welcome to the mix, y'all. And uh, you can, let's see, here I am on Twitter. Uh, if you're still using the Twitter X platform, you can follow me at Phil Kearney. Uh, otherwise, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Thanks to everyone. Wow, uh, another supporter. Thank you for jumping on board with us. Uh, if you want to check out more about uh, what this system is, uh, the playtest content for the Marshall Power System that we're going to be using this campaign to playtest is here on my Patreon. If you want to be on board with my Patreon, you'll have... Uh, voting rights and first seat preference during playtesting if that is something that you are interested in being a part of but overall the document that we're going to be working in today it is a read only document for people outside uh, of the um, of the design team uh, so um, if you click on the youtube stream you can access this whether you're a patreon or not it's just support is appreciated um, youtube stream takes you here hi uh, but if you click on the Martial Powers playtest itself, um, for folks that are veterans to the channel and longtime subscribers, you'll recognize this content. It's the same page that I am flowing through here. Uh, the playtest document that we're creating is way down here on page uh, 88 of the document. So again, it's read-only, but you, it, everything that is above this is uh, play content for level 1 to 20 for all the martial characters, barbarians, fighters, monks, paladins, rangers, rogues, as well as options for artificers and warlocks to use this alternate magic system, which is very uh, uh, akin to the Magic the Gathering system where you're tapping mana to activate different effects, um, 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 like uh, maneuvers, strikes, exploits, reactions, and sustained effects. Uh, you can check out the past 100 some odd episodes of this uh, to see how that's progressing. Um, let's see, there's that and that and, okay, great. So I've got maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a half hour or so that I can play today. I, I don't have as much time as I normally have, uh, but I'll be back tomorrow morning to do more spell jammer art. I'll be, uh, back on Thursday to do more spell jammer art. And then I'll be back Thursday night, uh, to do more Eberron token art. And then on Friday, we'll be back here for spell jammer in the morning. We'll be doing more martial power stuff at lunch on Friday as well. And then on Saturday, I'll be back. And I honestly don't know what I'm doing on Saturday. It's my free day to do whatever I want. So we'll see what shenanigans we get into. But when we last left off our team uh, or the conversation that we're having, we were building out just the base mechanics of how uh, the color manas, uh, color lands work for... Um, for building the Rubble Belt hex crawl, of course, Rubble Belt is the ruins that get created by massive 20-mile worms 
that surface, destroy everything, and then go back under during migration and breeding seasons. So there's that. Um, so the, the way that Magic the Gathering works is that mana is fueled by the land types. The land types of white is plains, blue is islands, um, black is swamps, red is mountains, and green is forests. So those are the basic land types that exist inside the game. And we spent time last session or two sessions ago, the, uh, the uh, episode one of the Rubble Belt campaign, which is episode 100 of the stream in general, um, we have the, the land breakdowns. Uh, we're looking at sizes of squares. So uh, while you're going through this hex crawl type and or point crawl environment, uh, when you uh, when we random up, here's the, the random table of just the random uh, color type, you roll a D6. So you'll get white, blue, black, red, or green, or it'll be the same color tile that you're currently moving into. And then each tile, like here we have, uh, like in this one, you will you would start in a red square, and if it's a west march, then generally we're gonna march westward, just to limit the scope of all the terrain that we can be inside of. But uh, white is plains, blue is generally expressed as islands, um, red as mountains, but um, obviously, there are a lot of different types of land that exist. So there is what we'll need to do. What we need to do is build a list of colors. So let me drop down here into, uh, let's see, uh, things to do, uh, color land breakdown. Um, land types by color for all elevations. So we, we determined last time that there is a, that there is a, um, an incline, a flat, and a decline to the terrain, which is randomized as well. And depending on what type of color it is, it's more likely to have elevation, um, um, delevation, um, rising, um, falling, um, up, down, and flat. All right, okay, so there, there you go. Um, so I think, um, honestly, I wanna take a, a quick tangent here. Let's go with um, Ravnica land cards. Let's see what we can see in the world of Ravnica land cards. So land plus Ravnica, city of guilds, gatherer, uh, return to Ravnica, guild lands, and you wake them. Let's see what this does and what this does. Let's see what is revealed to us. I'm gonna pull this out into a separate thing. So I'm going to need a variety of different types of lands. So those that sink into the ground, uh, and those that rise above it. Uh, there's gonna be color combinations that we need to think about. Uh, so the way that the stain is structured is that the larger, the, the large tile, I think we're looking at like either somewhere between like a 24 to 30 mile tile and then breaking down each tile into subdivision. So like if we did, uh, like if this was a 30 mile tile, then this would be 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles. And then we would be able to allocate uh, a block of time for the, the goal here is to have your team scout ahead, investigate a square, uh, if um, resolve any random encounters or uh, or signature encounters that are challenge signature challenges <laughs> signature challenge. Welcome British bakers. Um, yes, let's cook. So uh, yeah, you have your uh, have a signature uh, event inside of the tile which we'll be able to randomize or have just a random encounter or have nothing. Uh, it takes a f I'm thinking it takes five hours to investigate a square and if it's on an incline or decline you double the time that investigation time will uh, will be both to scout the area to see if there are any threats and then to have encounter and then to have any kind of uh, encounter to resolve what that threat is and then be able to move your caravan into that space so the five like if I were to move um, to like say this white like uh, to like this white space here we know it's flat land as opposed to elevation next to us um, the flat land it would take from the starting block here moving into this square it would be a five hour process uh, we would then be able to clear out any obstacles inside that tile and move the caravan into that position 
while we're in that position, we would then be able to move to the next square. If we leave our caravan behind and start moving through multiple squares, then the, uh, we may have to do, like that may trigger like a rescue mission. Like the caravan gets captured or sieged while your team is away and that may trigger like we'll have to decide what the consequence is for moving away but i'm thinking the caravan is threatened and then your team has to go in and rescue the caravan from being threatened uh, but if you're moving the caravan into the square that you're occupying as you clear each square so you're keeping you know so you're uh, so you're escorting your caravan through the rubble belt uh then i'm there's like uh One, two, three, four. So if we're gonna break down each tile into a block of nine, we could roll a D10 to determine how many challenges there are in the tile. And um, like in this instance, we have white. So like if like here we move, like in this example, we move straight forward, but we could also move to this square or we can move to this square. But, uh, but obviously from start here, the majority would be moving through this square, any one of these three tiles. So you'd have one, two, three, four, five tiles to pick from. And then once you like say move into this tile, then you'd be able to move to this tile, this tile, this tile, this tile, or this tile to be able to investigate these areas. So when you move into a tile, there would be surrounding threats. Like maybe, hmm. Maybe like if there's, okay, so if we're gonna have, if we're gonna have a setup that there's gonna be, maybe it's like, maybe it's D6, we like roll a D6 for the number of threats in a tile. So I could, we could then roll a D6 to see how many threats there are. This is me, this is me creating live time, so. If it's disjointed, it's not a it's not a preset presentation that we're working our way through. Um, what I want what I want to look at is um, up and flat. So whites don't. Okay, so we want to build um, tile types uh, white up white flat. Um, blue up, blue flat, blue down. I think black is flat and down. Yeah. Black flat, black down, red up, red flat. And then that's right. Um, Green up, green flat, green down. I believe that's how we have it set up, yeah? Up, down, yep. Up, flat, down, up, flat, down, up, flat, flat, down, up, flat. So we have more ups than downs, that's good. Okay, cool. So, and we have, uh, and we have language that we want to build for dungeons, but we're not gonna get there yet. The idea is that if it's a, uh, since it's a, uh, since the, the world is covered in city, uh, in a uh, overall like street level is flat and there's skyscrapers and monuments and ziggurats or whatever mass uh, like massive structures that incline up to higher like sky bridges floating islands like like sky islands these are different environments that exist inside the Ravnica game world and then declines are like uh, uh, are like uh, worm pits uh, wormholes where the worms surface and then dive back underground um, as well as um, sinkholes and uh, and just rifts that open up into the underdark or the uh, the undercity, and of course that that would be all smashed and destroyed because of the worms' progression through here, and it's all been overgrown over centuries of un uh, of unreclaimed infrastructure that's just basically underground rotting. So that becomes like a swamp-like environment. So what we need to do off the cuff here is start looking at. Uh, land types by land for elevation so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's 12 types of land overall that we would need to look at so let's look at land plus return to ravnica and then we have uh, land which is uh, ravnica boros garrison 
Demir Aqueduct, Dusk Mantle, Forest, Golgari Rock Farm, So these are considered islands because the waterfalls that are sweeping past them are surrounding them with water. That's really interesting. We can do really fun stuff with that. Um, so I guess um, under blue flats, we'd be looking at um, um, level water with structures rising from look at let's see if there's any other interesting things that we can see here uh, mountain it looks like oh, interesting um, mountain up uh, looks like um, towers and fa uh, factory towers factory towers I think is what we're looking at there Overgrown tomb. It's a swamp. Strip swamp forest. See that land swamp forest. Interesting. Overgrown tomb. So we're looking at a color combination there of swamp and forest. So that would be what black down and forest down. Um, Overgrown tomb. Oh, there was the uh, there was the rock farm. Let's go back up and take a look at that. Uh, Boros Garrison. That would be white and red, and that would be ups. So, what we have: uh, red up. Red up, that's red up, and then white up. Maybe that's white flat. Maybe that makes more sense. Uh, Boros Garrison. Let's go with let's go with that idea for now. I don't. Hey, drop in comment below if you think this stuff is interesting. Uh, Demir Aqueduct. So that's just, uh, just okay. So it's De, it's it's Demir, it's Aqueduct. Um, black, blue. So blue has down. Um, under city Aqueduct. Now yeah, let's just call it Demir. Let's call it Demir, Demir. So Demir Aqueducts. And we may find this should actually be uh, like a flat, but for now, near aqueducts. Let's see what else we find. Let's just break this shit down, right? Uh, dusk mantle. I don't. Yeah, dusk mantle is like a key location. House of Shadow. I don't think that would be in the rubble belt. Uh, so flatland green is just simple forest. And then white flat is plains. That, uh, Boros, yeah, Boros Garrison is up. Actually, that suddenly makes sense to me. Uh, Demir Aqueduct, and we had black for Demir Aqueduct. Red, black, flat. Wait, that's not right. Blue, black, there we go. Give me an aqueduct, give me an aqueduct. Straight forest, Golgari rock farm. Golgari rock farm. Golgari rock farm. Overgrown 
tomb, planes. Mm, the, the planes are going to be overrun. Since this is the Rubble Belt area. It's just going to be raw terrain. So I don't need the Sacred Foundries. Not, that's too special. That's not going to be in there. Like Selesnia, like, uh, Selesnia Sanctuary. Sun Home. Like Sun Home, that's too specific. But um, how about... Um, how about we go with uh, Selesnia... Painting gardens. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but I'm imagining a, uh, a high sweeping um, green up. Selesnia painting gardens. I don't necessarily know what that even means yet. Swagos can't have that. Swamp, Underdark, Swamp. I mean, the Swamp is Swamp. Um, how would we do that? Um, that'd be Flat Swamp. It'd just be Flat Swamp. Swamp. Um, still Waters. Temple Garden is green and white. Slesnia Temple. So by keeping the by keeping the key, so okay so just to go back and visit this the the main tile like in this instance is blue the main tile is blue so when we go into this blue space here double blue means it's just straight blue blue white means the the main tile is blue and then the sub tile the square in that tile the, this three by three space is the tile that we're moving in here and this is how the tile breaks down so I'm thinking uh, when the team is exploring when they get to the edge of another tile, they can they can see what color it is. Or if like here in the elevation, they'd be able to see the tile here, tile here, tile here, tile here, and tile here, and know what the base color of each of the tiles is. But until they actually go in, uh, and when until they're actually adjacent to the tile, they won't know what the sub tile like. Like if I'm in this elevated blue space here, I'll know that this is a white tile and this is a white tile and I will know that these are white, blue, and black tiles that are bordering it and that the elevation is flat. But I would also gain that information if I did a search in this area. When I do that five hour reconnaissance in this area, I'll gain um, information, I'll, I'll be able to uh, resolve any random or planned encounters in there or, or I guess key encounters. Yeah, random and key encounters in that tile. Uh, as well as know the uh, the color combination of the adjacent tiles and be able to move the um, um, the caravan into that tile before moving on to the next space. Like that's your five hour block. Uh, going up on the incline or resolving decline, that is going to be difficult terrain, which is going to double the time that it takes to travel through it, which means instead of being a five hour block of time to traverse this tile, it would then be a 10 hour to resolve that and of course you only have typically uh, you have eight hours of downtime uh, so we're fudging it to nine hours so you have three five-hour blocks of time to resolve during the course of the day uh, so if you were to like make like say move from like this square like from start into this square into this square and you could like say go into this square and end your day and then you could catty corner blop over to this for another five hour block of time, or you could go this way for 10, this way for 10, this way for 10, or you could backtrack for five, 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 and now you're hitting wall, so you could like catty corner to five, five, and then you'd be able to cross over into the next square. So normally you would have um, those three hour blocks. Maybe uh, maybe we should have an idea of like um, um, three times five hour segments. Five hours equals flat tile. 10 hours equals elevation tile. Difficult terrain. 
and then five hours equals um, maybe like fortify position. So like if you, so how to put, like, uh, like if you start off and you decide to ascend uh, into this straight blue tile, so you're gonna be gaining elevation that's going to give you vantage to see what adjacent tiles are, so it's worth your time doing that. But now you only have a five hour block of time left, which you could use to cross into this one, this one, this one, any of these three tiles here, because there's only five hours to resolve, or this one here to resolve, because you know what the upcoming colors are going to be, so you know what the lands are. Uh, but if, like, say, you don't want to make those moves, or your plan for the next day would be, let's go one tile, two tile, since you only have three moves per day that you can make. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Then you could use the Fortify. If you don't resolve all the squares that are surrounding you, if we have a random, like, if we're doing a random thing that determines, like, if... Like this, like uh, like we were looking at like having a D6 to roll how many how many challenges are go there's going to be per uh, um, per t I should probably use tile versus square. So this would be a tile, and these are squares inside of the tile. So if we're going to determine that there's going to be like a like you'd roll a D6 to see how many challenges there's going to be in a tile, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be zero, so it'd be six. So when we do that. I guess we'd have to randomize which tiles they would be in. One, two, three, one, two, three. I could roll. Hmm. Maybe, um, Yeah, no, right? Where do we go from here? Okay, so what if I rolled a um, what if I rolled a a D eight? No, it should, maybe it should be a D ten to be able to start figuring out like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, where's my pen? There we go. Let's go with um, oh I don't know. Let's just go to fifty. Let's let's go to fifty percent on. Uh, Uh, I rolled a nine, so that would be C for challenge. I guess if I roll 10, we reduce the challenge by one, maybe. Um, so that'd be one. Uh, I, uh, what, what did I roll? I roll I roll four, so there's four challenges in this tile. So this square has a challenge because I rolled a nine. I'm gonna roll another D10. Uh, I rolled a seven. So that means there's gonna be a challenge in this square. And this would be information that I, as the DM, would keep concealed. One, two, three. So I know there's a challenge here. And fourth one is one, two. So these are the challenge, t uh, these are the tiles that are gonna be challenges. If the team, so when the team decides which tile they wanna move into, the DM is going to know that these are the tiles. So I'm gonna pull off of white. I'm gonna have uh, one, two, three, white, and then I'm gonna have uh, red. So the challenges that could be inside of here could be any combination of blue or white challenges because the overall, the tile itself is blue and each square inside of this tile is going to be whatever combination that is. So like this is straight blue. So like this is gonna be um, like, uh, like blue and red, right? So it's gonna be a Zet in nature. Um, this is blue. Uh, blue wipes so that will be Azorius by nature. This will be Azorius and this will be Azorius. So there's a lot of Azorius shenanigans happening inside of this tile. Um, so we're going to have, maybe we would be able to have like an overall theme of Azorius inside, uh, yeah, inside of this, inside of this tile. So these, uh, one, two, three, four, five, these five squares don't necessarily have any challenges in them. So all we would have to do is just resolve that you move through that. So we might be able to process multiple days, like whatever, whatever tile they move into, they're going to do their, their exploration. And that's when they'll find if there's like, they'll discover if there's going to be something in that tile or not. 
maybe if they delve and we can call delving anytime, like this is an incline because it's structures, right? There's, there's incline structures, toppled towers, uh, tipped over skyscrapers, partially crushed factories, whatever it is that the worm came across that destroyed it. We'll have, um, we'll be able to um, have the surface and then anytime you delve, that would be going inside of the structure. Uh, it would take you maybe like maybe if you go in ooh maybe that's it like if you go inside the structure maybe that will cut the structure time to five hours but it's going no nah, that one uh, but it'll be guaranteed to have an encounter inside of the structure hmm not necessarily a hundred percent on that. But that's the that's the idea of it. So if you move into a tile that has a challenge, you'll need to resolve the challenge. And when you move into uh, if you like if you're resting in here, we have one challenge that's adjacent. If you for I don't know, if you fortify your um, if you fortify the caravan as a five hour block of time to like to cap off your day, uh, then when you're fortified, that will guarantee that you'll have a long rest without interruption. If you don't fortify, if the tile that the caravan is currently occupying is adjacent to an, uh, to an unresolved challenge, then that means that you'll most likely have to, um, they'll, they'll be, they'll, uh, the, whatever creatures, if that, if that challenge has creatures in it, those creatures will become a random encounter that you have to resolve during the evening as uh, a caravan defense challenge. So I kind of like that idea. Moving through the center of the square could potentially be a big risk then because, well, I mean, once you get into the, once you get into this, what, what it basically is going to mean is that the DM is going to have to basically have a, a vague idea of what the surrounding terrain is going to be that could potentially cause trouble for the team. So I think I like that. I'm going to take, I'm going to take another, I got another 10 minutes I can play today because I want to just look at some more of these terrains that we're digging through. Uh, Temple Garden felt good. I think that's the general gist of how we want to play this stuff out. Fortify position uh, equals no random, uh, no, no long rest disruptions. It's like you can move two tiles and fortify, or if you want to move five, like if you're confident there's no surrounding threats or you think you can fight them off, like you can have one you can have one random encounter while you're taking a long rest and that won't disrupt your long rest. So Vito Gazi, the city tree, that's, that's watery grave. Interesting. Let's go with that. Watery grave. And uh, what is it? Um, city tree. That would be white and slip. Put a one one green sap loading creature meat. Um, uh, green up. Slizzy city tree. And then white up. So we may like replace the hanging gardens. We might just get rid of hanging gardens since that's something I made up. Maybe we'll keep it. Um, oh, no, we'll just go with, no, we can just go with Slesnia Gardens. That works. Yeah, white flat, green flat. Let's keep going on this. Uh, watery grave.
Oh, is that it? Interesting. Okay. Well, maybe we can get through these. Uh, Blood Crit. Ooh, neat. Grove of the Garden. Uh, Grove of the Guardian. That's uh, that's very specific. A Blood Crypt uh, where the dead serve as diversion, decor, and dessert. Blood Crypt. That's pretty cool. Is that just black? Oh, it's black and red. Fucking interesting. Okay, well, red doesn't have any downs, so that means that's flat. So, Blood Crypt. Hey, Hornetico, how you doing, my guy? Yep, I'm just uh, I'm just playing with different Ravnica lands as we're building out this uh, this Robo Belt, uh, looking at the different land types. So you have the main tile, roughly 30 miles. This one is blue. So inside of this blue, each of these tiles is 10 miles squares. So like a blue blue, that's all blue. Uh, but this white tile, that would then be blue white. So that's that's Azorius territory, right? So I'm going through. The different elevations. This is in the document, of course, in the Martial Powers document at the very back end of it. But we have elevation by land type. And so now we're going through looking at the different Ravnica land tiles, uh, land cards that exist for us to start creating the flavor tech. So, oh. As I try to wrap my head around, smiling. Right on, man. Good luck. I am almost out of time for the day. So I'm going to see if I can. There's not a lot of lands in the set, so I'm gonna see if I can kick through these. Hallowed Fountain, a place to relax if you have the proper permit. <laughs> um, Hallowed Fountain is white blue. Overgrown Tomb is white green. Okay, let's go with that. Overgrown Tomb is black green surface. Black overgrown tomb, black flat. Red. Blue, I need to put in the subcolors. Um, what is this? Uh, overgrown tomb, green. Blood crypt is black. So these color combinations, as we random into lands, if there's a, if there is a challenge inside of that square, a random encounter or or a key encounter, then uh, whatever land type that is inside of, we can go into here and look, and we can do a random roll for what type of uh, what the terrain is. So like if we have like this blue white, do we have a blue white thing so far? Watery grave is blue, so that'd be black focused. Um, white, blue. Yeah, we don't have anything specifically, that, but like if it was like white, red. Like, um, anyway, we don't have enough lands yet for me to be able to easily throw out an example, but ultimately we're looking to have at least four land types for each elevation, uh, each color and elevation that the color can have. There's only a combination of 12. So I'm hoping we're gonna be able to find um, hallowed, yeah, Hollow Fountain doesn't feel right. Steam Vents, that's a good one. Uh, blue, red. And that's a good surface level, I think. Um, let's go with uh, Steam Vents. Blue. And this is in the Rubble Belt, so it's all ruined. Steam Vents. Uh, red. So I, we might actually want to push the, the Watery Grave down into the into the lower elevation because there's not a lot of representation for black below the ground. So, um, watery grave. There. Like that. Steam vents, temple garden, that's rogue's passage, that would be ignored. Exorius guild, uh, that would not be there. Guild gate, guild gate, no, no, no. Uh, Trans Guild Promenade, that, no, that was, that's too specialized. Of course, forest is forest. So just flat forest would be forest. And then red up would be mountain factory towers. Uh, 
where to go from there island so this is this looks like an elevated yeah that's uh that's um um sky um uh sky waves. straight blue with high elevation and then mountains this is straight mountains so we're looking at red Garrison. Um, the elevated community. Maybe that's the way that we can express that. Um, planes. What are we expressing with this plane? And what are we expressing with this one? We have flat swamp here, we have flat plains here, but it's also overrun. So it's not just, it's ruined cityscape. It's not cityscape, it's ruined cityscape. So that's actually factory towers, uh, mountain. Oh, there we go. Um, toppled. Uh, what would that be? Um, toppled, yeah, community. Oh, and that's that's all the lands we have for that. So, is there? How else am I going to search? What can I do to? Let's go with Ravnica plus. Land. How's that go? Zero results. All right, well, I'll need to figure out how to use Magic the Gatherer. So, but I think that's about all the time I have for today. So we're starting to build out language. We'll want to, uh, we'll need to buff these out. I don't know if this is entertaining content for anybody, but, uh, and then we'll work on, maybe next session we'll work on designing dungeons specifically. Right now we're just looking at the big picture of how we, uh, how, of how we can structure the, 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 um, the West March campaign in general. And then once we get all the, just the basic mechanics of it, and we can start boring down into deeper. What I think I wanna do, the way that I wanna make, I think I think what I wanna do to make the, the color of the tile not only be descriptive and to shape the type of creatures and, and hazards and traps that you'll face, but I think since, since the way that the structure is that each character is devoted to a guild, so they have two colors, I'm thinking when you're in a tile that corresponds with uh, with your like uh, like in, like we're, we keep using this one as an example this uh, this white blue. If your character has either white or blue mana in their mana pool, I think while you're in that tile, aside from all the other things you can do to spend mana to to trigger different discipline effects or spells, if you're using a, a spellcasting character in, in, in the uh, in the playtest. I think what I want to make special about being in that land is that you can give your mana to other characters as a as a help action to give them um, a uh, an inspiration point. Like if I'm if I'm playing uh, a Demir character, and while we're inside of this this blue tile, any time inside of this tile while we're in there, since I have blue mana, if your character is trying to do something. I could then burn one of my points of blue mana to give your character advantage or even like stacking advantage. Like if we have two or three people that are all playing blue, uh, uh, blue devoted characters like an Azorius, a Demir, and say a Nazette character. If that if that's what your team composition is inside of this blue tile, then while you're in that set, whenever your character is doing something, if you have open mana, you can just freely give it to each other to continue burning on die rolls until you get until you either run out of mana or you're content with the result. And of course, you can take a short rest to potentially, depending on what kind of character you're playing, to get your mana back after that short rest, but you only get one short rest per tile. So if you haven't resolved the challenge and you've burned through all your mana, then you're basically gonna have to use zero mana cost um, uh, powers that your character has opted into using your skill sets or your, your, your build kit um, or your, you know, SOL. 
So that's that's why I think I, I, that instead of, like I was originally thinking, well, you can attune to that, you can attune to that tile, and you'd have to do a short rest while you're in that tile to attune to it. But uh, I think if, I think if it's just while you're in the tile, not forcing attunement, just like right off the cuff. If if you've got a if you've got a corresponding color that the tile is devoted to, yeah, you can you could spend your mana on boost like whatever. Uh, whatever disciplines it is that your character has or you know obviously like spell casting if you're a caster but again just to reiterate like use that anytime you throw a d20 you would be able to burn mana on the fly like just not even as a reaction just here take some of my mana you can use it as part of your action so that way the team is working together and as you're you'll you'll then want to know because you can change what character you're using anytime in, anytime you drop into a new game so during the course of that day's game, um, if you're specking into a, uh, a, a blue-black character and you're traversing a blue tile, then you know you'll be able to use, you can, you can recalibrate, uh, you can devote all, like during your next short rest or during a long rest, you can devote all your blue mana, uh, all your mana to just blue if you just wanna be a support character that day and just use all of your mana to give uh, bonus die rolls to your team as a support character. Uh, there may be options that may lean into that that makes it fun. Uh, but then you would then be able to just use whatever mana tricks you have to buy down costs so you're not spending any mana for first rank powers, for instance. So that's the idea behind it. Work in progress. I honestly don't know if these things are interesting to people or not, but this is the idea that we're going with. And, uh, and once I have this fleshed out enough that we actually have some, some, um, some uh, random encounter lists, of because uh, that, that'll be the next stage. After we get done with parsing out the lands, we can start uh, we can start building out what like a like a like a d like a d6 or like a, a d10 list per land type, so that while you're traversing that land, if your challenge is in that corresponding land type, then we'll have a quick list of random creatures that you could run across of either like red or blue if you're in a in, a, in like in this is that tile here because it's blue overall and then red for this specific square inside the blue tile we would then be able to borrow off of blue and red to have a combined uh list of like a 2d6 list uh that you'd run the d6s down to compare like have one blue and one red and that's going to be the encounter that you would have a mix of those two things for instance that's the thought that's the idea that's going on uh inside my head about how this is a build out so once we flesh out uh, the different descriptors of the different land types and then we'll be able to uh, go in and build the, the D6 list for each type of land and then have them combine. And, that'll, and then we can build out, since we're starting at third level, we can just start calibrating things from like CR3 to 5, whatever. Uh, we can start building little encounters, traps, and hazards, and challenges that'll be level appropriate. And so as we go through the campaign from level 3 to 7, testing this stuff, we'll be able to build out CR appropriate for all of those different allocations. I think that'll work, but that's the process that we're going through. So that's it for today. That's what we're going to do. That's, that's the plan. So that's, that's, uh, that's where we're going to take this stuff and we'll be building that stuff out. Some here on stream, some of it offline, depending on what time is available, but, um, check in occasionally on this. If you want, I also have, uh, the, the spell jammer art stream that I do. Uh, I build, um, I do creature tokens for Eberron in the evenings. And then we do martial power stuff, either building out characters magic items, creature kits, or building the rubble belt. Um, those are the different things that we do with uh, the Martial Power System uh, playlist right now. So anyway, I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. We'll do more Spelljammer art. So we're gonna go. Thanks for showing up, man. Anyone else that's catching this in the future, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. We are here pretty much every day now. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Cheers. <laughs>